News. Good evening, I'm Maggie Wade. Next on the 10 p.m. report, deadly gunfire on a Jackson Street tonight. Two are hit in a drive-by shooting. And the meltdown of the ice storm of 96, but we're not out of the freezer yet. From your number one news team, this is the WLBT 10 p.m. report with Maggie Wade and Howard Ballou, Walt Grayson with weather, and Rob Jay with sports. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. Jackson police say it was a drive-by shooting that left behind two victims tonight. That's right, Howard. One teenager is dead, another wounded. Police are looking for a motive and suspects. Police arrived at 960 Pine Lake in northwest Jackson about three minutes after the call came in to headquarters. Investigators found shells from a 9mm weapon and two victims. 19-year-old Keith Holloway was pronounced dead on arrival at University Medical Center. 16-year-old Antonio Williams was hit in the leg. He's being treated at a local hospital. Sergeant Frederick Gaddis is one of the officers investigating the drive-by shooting. Right now we have uh, one subject that was killed on scene and one uh, juvenile that was shot inside the house. Uh, we're still investigating right now. But it does appear to be a drive-by shooting? At this time, yes. Um, what kind of weapon was used? Well, we, uh, right now we can tell that possibly a 9mm or a 380 uh, handgun was used. Police are looking for a suspect. They don't have a motive at this time, but they know two cars were involved. This shooting happened right next door to a church. Police tell us gunfire came from both vehicles. They have numerous descriptions on the cars, but one vehicle was occupied by four black males. And just before news time, WLBT News learned 16-year-old Antonio Williams was hit in both legs. He is under observation in the emergency room at a Jackson area hospital. And the suspect who police believe may have pulled the trigger in Paula Thurman's death turned himself in after eluding police for more than a week. 16-year-old Greg Greenwood surrendered to police in Canton today. He is one of three teenage suspects who are accused of shooting 23-year-old Paula Thurman in her driveway last Sunday after she asked them not to block the street. A 15 and 13 year old are already in custody. Well, you've heard it before, police saying crime fighting is a partnership with citizens. Today, a bank robbery suspect was captured quickly thanks to some alert witnesses. Bird Case reports the crook and the cash were rounded up promptly after the Bank of Mississippi branch at McDowell Road and Suncrest Drive was robbed. A lone black male wearing a ski mask robbed the Bank of Mississippi branch just east of the intersection of McDowell and Suncrest. He was traveling in a white Ford cab he had carjacked earlier. Apparently, while he was robbing the bank, the cab driver, who had been stuffed in the trunk of the cab, was able to escape. Several citizens saw it all, followed the cab, and called police. One was Edgar Bates. He went up uh, Rocks Road Extension with the with the hood of the car bouncing up and down. And you followed him? Followed him up to Seagant Hill Apartments. And called police? Called the police, yeah. Police at first thought they had two suspects, but Sergeant Richard uh, Barnes of Precinct 2 explains it turned apartments. out there was only uh, suspect one suspect. Took off running. I gave chase and was assisted by several plainclothes officers. The suspect was later apprehended in a wooded area behind Whispering Pines Nursing Home. Uh, we later learned that there was only one suspect where we initially were told there were two. Uh, the subject believed to have been the second suspect was actually the cab driver that the bank robbery suspect had armed carjacked and handcuffed and placed in the trunk of the car. He was able to get away or get out of the trunk of the car as the suspect uh, left the parking lot of the bank. The suspect has been identified as 21-year-old Marcus Terrell Page of Jackson. He's charged with bank robbery, armed carjacking, and kidnapping, and is being held without bond. Police recovered a large amount of money with the red dye pack residue all over it, a weapon, a ski mask, and the suspect's unopened box of fresh fried chicken was also recovered. The Jackson Police Department can certainly thank citizen involvement for making arrests in this case. For Chase, WLVT News at McDowell and Suncrest. 
Well, tell them in these parts that 32 degrees can be called a warming trend, but that's certainly the case tonight. The meltdown finally began today, but there is still plenty of ice in the shaded areas and clinging to tree limbs. These pictures were shot today in Warren County, where some people are still without power tonight. But it was almost high noon today in Jackson when the mercury finally hit 32 degrees, breaking a stretch of 76 hours and 32 minutes of sub-freezing temperatures. And the lingering effects of the ice storm of 96 are still being felt around the state tonight. At 6 this evening, about 1,400 people still had no power. Interstate 55 near Senatobia in North Mississippi remains almost impassable, and several people froze to death in bitter cold. The winter storm is blamed for 13 deaths. Included in that total are seven members of a Newton County family who died in a house fire. The family lost power Friday morning and were using candles for light. Sheriff Jackie Knight believes those candles caused the deadly fire around 3 a.m. Saturday morning. 59-year-old Willie Lee Evans, his wife, 44-year-old Flora Mae Evans, three of their children, four grandchildren, or a grandchild rather, and a family friend, all died in that blaze. 76 consecutive hours of below freezing temperatures have a lot of you dealing with water pipes that have burst. And the city of Jackson's Public Works Department is also busy tonight repairing broken water mains. We've had more than 20 water main leaks in the city since Friday, and the record cold is being blamed for that unusually high number. However, all those breaks have not affected the city's water supply. It's reported to be in good shape tonight. Walt well, Grayson with our first look at weather, and we're certainly glad to hear that we have a warming trend coming yes, out. Yes, we're not always. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll save the specifics in a minute because I don't think you'd believe it if I told you how warm <laughs> it's going to get over the next two or three days. But yeah, when that uh, temperature went above 33, uh, 32 today, that collective hallelujah, that's the, <laughs> that was it. I have never felt 35 degrees feel so good as it did today. Oh, man, it did. It was great. A yeah. few clouds overnight tonight. Nice day coming up tomorrow, though. Okay. Well, great. thanks a lot. We'll have more a little bit later on. But coming up, a call to court for President Clinton. He's ordered to testify in a whitewater trial. And it's not enough to just lock up anymore. See what some are doing to keep thieves from driving away in their car. That's coming up in tonight's Crackdown on Crime report. This ride lasts eight seconds. At most dealerships, it goes on for hours, but not Metro. We make it easy. Our big, big selection and low, low prices lets you make your best deal today. Like a new Mazda 626, just $14,695, zero down. A new Rodeo, $229 a month, zero down.